Hey everyone! So the other day I had a discussion about this topic with Celestial Cow on her channel, which I'll link below. She critiques a lot of new age spiritual influencers who overcharge for their programs and promote materialism and the law of attraction. So be sure to subscribe to her channel. I wanted to make a video on this topic for my own channel just to share my thoughts in a more succinct way. Last week, Freely shared her view on this whole situation on her Instagram stories, and it was... yikes. I want to start out by saying that racism is more of an adjective than a noun. Like, nobody thinks they're racist. Of course, it can be used as a noun, <laughs> grammatically speaking, but I think that we should reserve the label for people who espouse racist beliefs often. And it's important to recognize that you can be anti-racist and well-intentioned and still say racist things. I highly recommend watching this video by T1J to get a better understanding. I do think Freely's stories were racist, and I think she should be held accountable, but I'm not here today to assassinate her character. In her story highlight, she references Candace Owens, Dave Rubin, and Ben Shapiro who are all right-wing propagandists here in the US, so not exactly reputable sources. This isn't to say that because they're wrong about all these other things, they are therefore wrong about this, but considering these people either downplay or outright deny climate change, denounce feminism, and support Trump, I think it's wise to apply a deep level of skepticism to their claims. To be fair to Freely, though, I'm not sure how familiar she is with these people given that she doesn't live in the US. I've been listening to a lot of black conservatives over the past week because I want to get a better understanding of their position. And of course, if we're going to tell people to listen to black people, I do think it's important to listen to voices across the political spectrum. Not all black Americans share the same experiences. But a common thread I've noticed among black conservatives like Candace Owens, Brandon Tatum, and Larry Elder is they tend to pick the most inflammatory and simplistic arguments to attack because they either haven't heard a nuanced leftist perspective or they're too far gone to understand nuance. There is some truth to what they're saying, but that's what makes their arguments so convincing. They're also guilty of the fallacy fallacy focusing on fallacious arguments made by BLM supporters to discredit BLM entirely. The statistics they cite to debunk systemic racism actually support the notion of systemic racism. Statistically, police do kill more white people than black people each year, but if you account for population size, police brutality disproportionately affects black people. They say, well, of course, black people commit more crimes, and they always bring up black-on-black -black crime. But their reasons for this disparity are shallow. They say there's this culture of violence, black people make bad decisions, they choose to sell drugs and sleep around and join gangs. But if you keep asking why and dig deeper, you realize that the reason black people commit more crimes is because of systemic racism. They lack generational wealth, which makes it more difficult for them to pull themselves up out of poverty, and poverty is a trap that leads to higher crime rates. I can kind of see Freely's point about racial tension being drummed up by the media and used as election fodder, because the Democratic Party relies on high voter turnout to win, and since the majority of black Americans are Democrats, it's in the party's interest to stir the pot, so to speak, right before an election to motivate them to get out and vote. And since the ideology of the Democratic Party is neoliberal, not leftist, they serve to uphold capitalism and push to reform existing structures rather than uproot and replace them. It is in the corporate Democrats' interest to hype up the racial aspect specifically regarding profiling of black people by white cops, in order to downplay the need for systemic change, the need to improve the material conditions and lift people out of poverty, and thus reduce crime rates. To truly tackle this issue, we need more than police reform. We need to end the era of mass incarceration by ending the drug war. 
and improve our education and food systems as these institutions disproportionately hurt people of color. In an article titled Beware of the Race Reductionist, Brianna Gray writes, Race and class are so interwoven that any political project that aims to resolve one while ignoring the other does a disservice to both. As Bernie Sanders put it when I asked him about the never-ending race versus class debates, it's not either or, it's never either or, it's both. Democrats like Obama have failed the black community by failing to take on the corporate establishment. The Black Lives Matter movement started under Obama's presidency. Black conservatives aren't wrong to point out the failures of democratic leadership, but they are wrong to run to the right. Choosing between neoliberalism and conservatism is a false dichotomy. We need to continue Martin Luther King's legacy and fight for democratic socialism. Due to our whitewashed and watered-down history classes, many people don't know that Martin Luther King was assassinated right after launching the Poor People's Campaign, a multiracial effort including African Americans, White Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Native Americans, aimed at alleviating poverty through social welfare programs. Sadly, the basic demands of this campaign have yet to be fulfilled. Conservatives love to quote MLK, forgetting that he was a democratic socialist who was hated during his time. They quote him in a way that is dismissive of the causes he fought so passionately for. To denounce violent protests in the name of peace and love without addressing the underlying cause is a gross distortion of King's legacy. This is what MLK said about riots. But it is not enough for me to stand before you tonight and condemn riots. It would be morally irresponsible for me to do that without, at the same time, condemning the contingent, intolerable conditions that exist in our society. These conditions are the things that cause individuals to feel that they have no other alternative than to engage in violent rebellions to get attention. And I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard. But I think we are witnessing America as a failed social experiment. And what I mean by that is that the history of black people for over 200 and some years in, in, in America has been looking at America's failure, its capitalist economy, could not generate and deliver in such a way that people could live lives of decency. The nation state, its criminal justice system, its legal system could not generate protection of rights and liberties. And now our culture, of course, is so market-driven, everybody for sale, everything for sale, it can't deliver the kind of, the kind of really real nourishment for soul, for meaning, for purpose. And so when you get this perfect storm of all of these multiple failures at these different levels of the American empire, and Martin King already told us about that. When I saw those pictures there in Atlanta, um, you could see Martin right there in Atlanta saying, I told you about militarism, I told you about poverty, I told you about materialism, I told you about racism and all of its forms whatever forms it takes. I told you about xenophobia, and what we've seen in America is now these chickens coming home to roost. You're reaping what you sow. The problem is that supporters of BLM are not exactly on the same page right now. There are many different opinions of what solving this problem looks like. Some want reform, but others say that reform won't work. We have to defund the police. I don't have all the answers, but it's not like the people shouting, abolish the police, are offering no alternatives. Abolish the police doesn't mean abolish all public safety programs. And defunding is a process that won't happen overnight. Some of the threads I've seen have offered alternative services for different scenarios. From my understanding, abolish the police means not having every officer play multiple roles many of which they aren't trained for, while carrying a deadly weapon. We need to demilitarize and decentralize law enforcement and overturn unjust laws. The reason people are saying all cops are bad is because all cops willfully chose a profession where they're legally obligated to enforce unjust laws. Not every cop is a raging racist asshole, and many have the best of intentions to serve and protect their community. But they're complicit in a system that was designed to protect white property owners and subjugate black Americans. 
and history is very relevant to the problems we see today. Post-1964, the war on drugs was intentionally crafted to target black people and white allies and take away their voting rights. One of Nixon's top advisors is on the record for saying, we knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. And if you're wondering, what the hell does this have to do with race? Just don't do drugs. Well, black and white Americans do drugs at the same rate, yet black people are arrested for nonviolent drug offenses at a much higher rate, receiving longer sentences for the same crime. Also, fun fact, for a long time, distribution of just five grams of crack carried a minimum five-year federal prison sentence, while distribution of 500 grams of powder cocaine carried the same five-year mandatory minimum sentence. Crack is much cheaper and therefore more common in poor black communities, whereas powdered cocaine is expensive and more common among the affluent. In 2010, Obama signed the Fair Sentencing Act, which reduced this disparity from a 100 to 1 ratio to an 18 to 1 ratio. A huge improvement, sure, but it's still not 1 to 1 and it wasn't retroactive. This is what we mean when we say racism is systemic. White supremacy didn't just poof out of existence with the passing of the Civil Rights Act. A president's signature doesn't dismantle hundreds of years of oppression. To say we live in a post-racial society is a very bold claim, considering huge racial disparities still exist. We have a very warped sense of time, so we forget that black people weren't given equal rights on paper until very recently. Just to give some context, my dad was four years old when the Civil Rights Act was passed. Not my great-grandpa, my own father. Racism is largely subconscious due to social conditioning. Our implicit biases don't just dissolve the moment we enact a new law. Even within individuals, it takes time to unlearn this stuff. To commit to anti-racism means working to fight racism in our society as well as within ourselves. Just as going vegan is a commitment to unlearning speciesism, which takes time. And it takes much more time to collectively unlearn this shit. If the vegan movement were to reach critical mass and we pass a law outlawing animal farming and animal testing and basically granted non-human animals personhood, do you think that within just a mere couple decades we would live in a post-speciesist society? Doubtful. I think Freely was being irresponsible with her platform to jump to these conclusions because it's clear that this is not her area and she doesn't seem well-read when it comes to racial justice or US history. It's okay if you're not an encyclopedia of knowledge, but if you're gonna take a public stance on such a sensitive issue, you might wanna look further than Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. I'm going to link a video by Seb Alex about racism within the vegan community because he makes a good case for why vegans should show solidarity in times like this. It doesn't take the focus away from the animals, it doesn't muddy the waters, it only strengthens our movement. I will say though, while I agree with the general sentiment that silence is complicity, I don't think we should be targeting individuals who haven't spoken up and harassing them about it because I don't really see that as productive. And to the question of can you be vegan and racist, technically, yes, you can. Just like you can be anti-racist and speciesist. But obviously it's inconsistent to be against the oppression of one group while complicit in the oppression of another. If you claim to be a free thinker and a truth seeker as Freely does, you should be consistently anti-oppression. Denying that people of color are oppressed in America is just as insane as denying that animals are oppressed. Just look at the way police react to peaceful protesters now and to peaceful protesters at Standing Rock, 
compared to the people protesting the lockdown. And one last thing I wanted to address, because this is the crux of the message from Black conservatives. Just because you personally don't feel oppressed doesn't mean that you aren't. And even if you've only had positive experiences as a Black person in America, you're one of the lucky few. I was skeptical of feminism for a while because I had never felt oppressed as a woman. I am very lucky to have never experienced anything traumatic because of my gender, but looking back through a critical lens, I can see that I had some internalized misogyny. It amazes me that Freely is this strong feminist who recognizes the oppressive standards society places on women, but the idea that black people are still oppressed is ridiculous to her. If you think the pressure to remove the hair on your legs is oppressive, imagine facing discrimination for the hair on your head as well. Many black Americans have many privileges, but just because your life could be much worse doesn't make your experiences of oppression not real. And like I said before, you can be oppressed without even realizing it. Backyard chickens, for example, have no concept of their own oppression. We should fight all forms of oppression, regardless of severity. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video sparks a healthy discussion. I'm trying my best to unite, not divide. All right, peace out. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat When me tell them say me no eat no fish, no, no meat now How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam When me tell them say that I'm a vegan man How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat When me tell them say me no eat no fish, no, no meat now